How's it going guys? Eric here from TechSode TV and in today's TechSode we're going to be doing an in-depth comparison of the slow motion recording on the Galaxy S7 Edge, the iPhone 6 Plus, and the iPhone 6S Plus. Let's get started. Samsung finally did it. They gave us slow motion filming that actually competes with the slow motion on an iPhone. And just for fun, can you guess which recording is from the iPhone 6 Plus and which one is from the S7 Edge? While you're thinking about that, let me give you some background on this. As you know from my previous videos, the slow motion recording on Samsung devices has always been terrible when compared with the slow motion recording on an iPhone. That's because Samsung wasn't actually recording at 720p. Instead, they were recording at 360p at 120 frames per second, then upscaling and dropping the frame rate down to 15 frames per second. That made for super low res and choppy videos. As you can tell, that's all changed with the Galaxy S7 and S7 Edge. So did you figure it out? The iPhone 6 Plus recording is on the left, and the S7 Edge recording is on the right. Let me know in the comments below if you guessed correctly, and why you guessed the way you did. Now for the in-depth stuff. First up, I'd like to point out the field of view on the two cameras. Both of these videos were filmed from exactly the same spot, yet the S7 Edge captures much more of the scene. This means you don't have to back up as far to get all the action in the shot. Next, let's talk about the colors. The iPhone's video is very washed out and undersaturated in comparison to Samsung's video which pops with vibrant colors. However, this doesn't necessarily mean that Samsung's camera is better. It just means that Samsung adds more contrast and a bit of sharpening to their video. If I add some contrast and a stitch of sharpening to the iPhone video, the images look much more similar. However, if you look at the detail in the roof of the building, it's clear that whatever Samsung is doing to sharpen their image is working better than anything I can do using my Premiere Pro CS6 editing software to get the iPhone to match. You can also see the difference in sharpness in my face. Now here's another look at the raw iPhone footage without adding contrast and sharpening. The next thing I want to point out is the stability of the shot. You can see that the S7 Edge looks like it was filmed on a tripod, while the iPhone 6 Plus shows some handshaking that's apparent when you look at the roof of the building. Both of these devices are using optical image stabilization, but it's clear that Samsung takes the win here. However, I couldn't let this go without knowing for sure, so I took another recording. But this time, I held both the iPhone 6 Plus and the Galaxy S7 Edge together in my hands so any handshaking would show up equally on both devices. Again, we see that the stabilization on the iPhone 6 Plus is not as good as the stabilization on the S7 Edge. I also called Apple and spoke to a senior advisor just to make sure the iPhone 6 Plus was actually using its optical image stabilization with slow motion recording, and they told me that as far as they could tell from their documentation, the iPhone 6 Plus is using its optical image stabilization for all video modes. At this point, you might be wondering why I'm not just comparing the S7 to the iPhone 6S Plus. Well, that's because I surprisingly don't know anyone that owns one. However, after asking a lot of people, I finally found a coworker who had one and was willing to let me use it for this next comparison. Can you tell which is which this time? Here's some more background while you guess. This video was filmed with pretty bright overhead lights, but it's certainly much darker than the bright sunlight from the last scene. If you guessed S7 Edge on the left and the iPhone 6S Plus on the right, you'd be wrong. It's actually the other way around. From this second video, we can see that the iPhone 6S Plus has comparable optical image stabilization to the S7 Edge, but has a considerable amount more noise in the shot due to the dimmer indoor lighting. This is because the iPhone 6S Plus has much smaller 1.22 micron pixels and a much narrower f2.2 aperture compared to the Galaxy S7 Edge's larger 1.4 micron pixels and wider f1.7 aperture, both of which are two of the most important factors for capturing low light images and videos. Looking at the S7 Edge footage, we see that it's actually overexposed. In other words, it's too bright. On one hand, it shows that the Galaxy S7 Edge outperforms the iPhone 6S Plus by a decent margin as far as low light capabilities because it not only gives us a brighter image, but there's also less noise. Now the flip side is that we lose some detail in the bright areas like on this keyboard. So while the iPhone is more noisy, it does capture more information. Now, this is something Samsung can fix with a software update but I wouldn't hold my breath for that anytime soon. Looking at the color in both of these, we see another substantial difference. The iPhone casts more of a blue, almost purple tone over the table, and the S7 Edge casts a very warm yellow tone over the table. So which one is closer to the actual color of the table? That would have to go to the- Just kidding guys, I'm not gonna leave you hanging. It's the iPhone 6S Plus by a small margin. 
While we're talking about color accuracy, I think it's worth pointing out that the recording I showed earlier to demonstrate the image stabilization between the iPhone 6 Plus and the S7 Edge had the opposite results. The iPhone 6 Plus still had more noise, but also had an overexposed image while the S7 had a properly exposed image with better color accuracy. The takeaway is that Apple has upgraded the camera in the 6S Plus to get better color accuracy than the 6 Plus. One more thing that you may have already noticed. The S7 Edge video will randomly skip a few frames. I looked through the outdoor scene again and didn't see this happening there, but I took a few more slow motion recordings in the same room and did notice that it kept happening. This may just be an issue with Samsung's low light slow motion capabilities, but I thought it was worth mentioning. Of course, I have to throw in the Galaxy Note 5 now. This was Samsung's best camera before the S7 was released. Right off the bat, you can see that the frame rate is half that of the other two phones, and the resolution is noticeably worse. However, while the Note 5 does a terrible job with slow motion, it was still rated as having the best smartphone camera for regular filming and photos until the S7 Edge came out. Only time and testing will tell if the S7 and S7 Edge take its place. So what does this comparison tell us? It tells us that both the latest iPhones and the Galaxy S7 and S7 Edge have phenomenal slow motion filming capabilities. So if you're deciding between an iPhone and an S7, the slow motion recording shouldn't be a factor in that decision because you'll be happy with either one. As for the camera as a whole, I highly recommend that you check out SuperSaf's detailed iPhone 6S Plus versus Galaxy S7 camera review. He covers selfies, video and audio, low light, focus speeds, and everything in between. I mean it when I say that he has some of the best smartphone camera reviews I've ever seen. In short, if the camera as a whole is a big determining factor for you, Saf answers just about every camera question you can think of in a single video. As always, I'll be responding to comments down below, but if this video ends up getting a lot of comments and you're looking for a fast answer, definitely send me a tweet on Twitter at TV because I get those notifications immediately. And don't forget to subscribe to see my top 100 features review of the S7 Edge. That's it for this Techisode. I'll see you guys in the next one.